Esports, education, and entertainment. I'm one of your hosts, Marcus Howard. I'm Sebastian, chosen one, Burton. What's up, y'all? Right in for me, your master geek, Chris. Glad to be back. With the new fresh background. Hey. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's temporary. <laughs> and Mr. Don't Work in the building. Welcome back, everybody. We've been gone for a couple weeks. You know, refueling the podcast. Everybody taking a much needed uh, break, recovery, re restructuring, figuring out the, the next what the next twenty episodes are going to look like for the podcast. And we're excited to bring Alan Clary to the podcast. This episode is going to be focused on entrepreneurship, and he is the resident guru. Uh, you know, he teaches it, he, he lives it, he, he wrote a book on it. He's the guy. Welcome to the podcast, Alan. Hey, hey, Marcus, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Uh, Sebastian, uh, Ready Infamy, uh, Derek, I see everybody out there. It's a pleasure to be on this show. It's an honor. Welcome, thank welcome, you. welcome. We're, we're broadcasting live on, on all the platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch. Uh, shout out to everybody who's tuning in. We appreciate your support. We just want to jump right into this, Alan. Can you share? Hey, real uh, quick, Marcus, are we going to have fun? On, are we going to have fun on this thing or what? We have one every week, oh, man. We have all, right, all, right. all right, good. That's what I'm just making sure. Mark, he's telling you to turn up a little bit, all right? He wants to turn up. That's him telling you to turn up a little bit. Whole glass of water that's, on that one. That, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Get these people, we got to get these people uh, their money. There's money for That blood that's flowing. Right. That blood flowing. That's right. I got some questions now. But go ahead first, Marcus. Yeah, you go yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Alan, just, just bring everybody up to speed. You've done so much in your career. Uh, you're, you're making waves here in Tampa Bay. You work with investors, high net worth individuals, uh, yeah. inside and outside of the wave. Just help everybody, you know, where you come from, what you're about. Okay, thanks. Uh, you know, I put my first book out last uh, year in the middle of the pandemic called Quit to Start. Quit to Start, and it's on Amazon. <laughs> Quit to Start. Quit to Start. <laughs> Quit to Start. Um, and people kind of gave me trouble about that name, you know, putting the word quit in the title of my book, you know, quit's kind of a negative word, right? I never quit, right? It just, but I said, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of people out there that need to quit what the hell they're doing and start the thing they're supposed to be starting, right? So I put that out in February, uh, right before the pandemic. I had no idea I was getting ready to put a book out in the middle of that, right? Mm. It, was a rough, it was a rough year. We had a we had a nice false start to that book launch, and I had, had three book launch parties before it was all shut down. Book did pretty well, but here's the thing: my first my first blog post was, "Did I write the wrong book, um, or did I write the right book at the wrong time?" I put that out in March of last year because it was like people weren't trying to quit the start; they were trying to hold on to what they had. <laughs> That's really cool. I mean? People were freaking out, and I was freaking out. That's uh, so. It took a few months for for that to to kind of like people to realize that that the world wasn't going to crash the economy was going to crash somehow i don't know how it didn't by the way uh and then and then now uh there's this great resignation happening right now the word people are wanting to quote quit their jobs left and right and do the thing they're passionate about or go pursue another thing so i'm getting um an 18 month delay on my book basically on this mm. yeah <laughs> so, that's that's it's cool how you wrote the first the, it's cool how you took the blog and took the title yeah. and like use that as like a tool to you know help start the conversation. Yeah. Like, did I write the wrong book? Because yeah, that would make me want to read like what I, it's about. I gotta, yeah, I got honest about that, right? Because it was like, man, this just is not resonating. Because everybody gets get naturally, we're all we all we're all like um, connected with this idea of quitting to start, right? Or quit 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 your job to start a company or quit what you're doing. To, that's exciting, but it was not exciting uh, in the summer of 2020. Right. Not an exciting message, but I wrote it out. I wrote it out. All right. That's dope. That's dope. So anyway, back just a why? little bit about myself. Go ahead, Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, why do, you, why do you think it's difficult for people to find a job that allows them to do what they want to do? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, um, 
Yeah, do, get a job and do what you want to do. The problem is, is that we all need a paycheck, right? And, you know, you just kind of have to take what you can get, you know, I think at the end of the day, and that's unfortunate about society and our, and our, and our society in terms of the, the jobs we end up in. Um, they're not always the best fit for where we're trying to go with our future. And they don't always have the best uh, management teams and cultures, and they don't always have the best, um, they don't always have your best interest in mind, even though it feels that way off in the beginning. So I just, I just find the whole thing pretty dysfunctional, honestly, trying to find, especially entrepreneurial mindset people, which is what I wrote the book about, which is it's about people that are just itching and clawing and scratching. Yeah, and just, just uh, restless and unsettled. Uh, they don't have jobs for, for those people for us. They don't have jobs for those people. Uh, you, you, you kind of think you do, but you don't. And at the end of the day, you end up pretty frustrated. I felt it. I felt it. I know that feeling. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, you know, maybe they're, they're, you know, kind of willing to be um, kind of half asleep in their job, so to speak. And that's okay. And I don't fault them for that because really, this is an affliction. The entrepreneurial mindset is an affliction. This is kind of frustrated, underachieving uh, thing that you live in. And you just, I used to have weekend depression, guys. I, I, I talk about this a little bit. I want to talk about it more and more into my future. But um, I, I've struggled with depression on and off my whole life. But most of it happened for me, like what I called weekend depression, sometimes vacation depression. Like I would be in my job. I was very uh, energized because you know, I was a very motivated team of person. But I couldn't handle downtime. I could not handle downtime. And. Um, and so I found that what, for me, as I was in, in, in companies and in middle management and so forth, that it would just squeeze all of the good stuff out of me. And I had nothing left for my, uh, myself, uh, friends and family on weekends and, and vacations. And I just find that, and I've got a whole chapter in my book called, you know, uh, you quote, you will get used up. If you, so if you have an entrepreneurial mindset and if you're driven to, to do big things, companies uh, working for other people, even if they have the best intentions and they really fundamentally like you and care about you fundamentally uh you put that you put your best foot forward they'll just take that take it for take that and squeeze that for everything it's worth because you know they feel like that's what they're paying for as, as you as their employee yeah do yeah. you do you feel like that is a fault of the job or fault of the individual doing the job for not having the coping mechanisms in place yeah. to deal with it yeah, I don't. I don't really fault the employer. Honestly, I think employers are going to always take with what you're given. Uh, and and uh, and I look back. I was such a giver on that. You know, I look back at my career and I just remember. Employer, honestly, I don't, I don't know what I was always. Yeah, trying to prove something to myself or my old man or somebody along the way that I that I could just be a high performer and I would do that and I would work 10, 12 hour days and I'd go in on Saturdays. I did that for so long and long and long, and I just had that and I was giving my best stuff away. I was giving my best stuff away. So I don't fault the employer. They they kept giving me paychecks and little bonuses and, and pat me on the back, right? Um, but then, you know, decades would clip off. And uh, at the end of the day, um, I wasn't building something for myself. Do you have a wife and kids? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, I do. And uh, my, my daughter, I have a, I just, the only one daughter, we, we ended up with just one. We wanted more, but it just ended up being my one daughter. So she gets all of the attention. <laughs> And she gets all of the attention and love. My wife and I were, were coming up on 30 years together and uh, just took her away for her birthday last week uh, into a, a secluded remote cabin in North Carolina. I just got back. So um, it's really it's a place called Sleepy Gap, North Carolina. I was really excited to take her there. But yeah, I've got this one daughter. She's in law school. Huh? And she's and she's killing and she's killing it, by the way. And she I'm hoping she doesn't fall into some of the same traps I fell into. What, like the fountain of youth? Yeah, <laughs> is that what, I know everybody's thinking that. Like, like, like what? Like Thirty yeah. years. I mean, no, this idea, this idea that you can uh, just you know kill yourself for your employer and um, and maybe not have as much to show for it as you imagine. Yeah. The flip well, side to that is entrepreneurship requires you to uh, be the rock star, but the thing that you're building then requires you to have people that are willing to give to you to build the thing that you created as an entrepreneur. So then you want people to give you the same thing that you yourself escaped from and from an employer, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, you know what? Entrepreneur owner op- owners uh, are sometimes the worst. Like they have clawed and scratched so hard to become business owners that um, th- what do they need at that point to really get escape velocity? They need really good soldiers and you know doers, right? So um, it's an interesting dynamic to see an entrepreneur break away, become a business owner, and start hiring their first employees, and then and in reality they need those employees to be employees and not entrepreneurs it's 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 a dilemma and I, i've i've been on both sides of that and it's 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 really tough to what's, what's to your like thoughts on finding up. what's your thoughts on finding those type of employees and how do you get them to buy in even though your philosophy yeah. is they should own their own stuff how do you cuz that is something yeah. that i think we all as entrepreneurs face that's a great point it's like yeah how do you when you're ready to scale and bring people in how do you get them to buy into your vision, but then they know your story, so they're like, well, I'm going to try to do that same thing, but you don't really need that for your business. Like, what what, what did you right. do, or what's in the book? What's the advice for that? Yeah, you know what? I think you'd have to, I think you have to resist the, the urge and the temptation. I know I have it myself. Like, I see I see myself and somebody that I want to, to hire and bring into the company, and um, and I, I feel like I need to pass on that individual in a way, right? And, 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 it's, and it's a tough thing, right? Because they want to learn from me and they want to be mentored and they want to be close to the, the, the action of what I'm doing. Um, and I end up going for it every time. I end up kind of doing it anyway. And so I'm giving you the advice that I probably don't take. Mm-hmm. But in reality, um, I don't know if it's serving them as well because at the end of the day, I'm trying to achieve, an, I'm trying to achieve a goal. It's a business builder, right? As much as I love mentoring and helping others, um, I'm also trying to get this thing done. And and so you, the reality is you really you, you want to hire people that are willing to be doers and are willing to spend five, eight years being a true employee and helping you achieve and help the, the organization, the team achieve the goal and be a little bit less selfless. Unfortunately, if somebody catches the entrepreneurial bug early in their life and career, it's hard to be selfless in those in those years. I mean, you can. You, it's funny. You get about six to eight months, and then about six to eight months, they're like, you know, they're ready to break out. And you're like, we were just getting started. We were just getting right. traction. Right. Right. Yeah, that's a crazy thing. Yeah, I guess. It's, I don't have an answer, but that's a tough dilemma, right there. Yeah, I've never thought of it, but as you're saying, I'm like, yeah, it's, I ponder that often. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, they come in with a lot of energy and said, like, I mean, I've got three or four that work with me now. And you you feel great. They feel great. Like they, they love. But then as soon as um, you get X number of months or maybe a year down the line is a real kind of a pivot point there because they've they've kind of drawn a lot of energy and excitement off of being a part of your entrepreneurial right. endeavor. And they kind of want to level up, you know, and you're like and you want to support it because your heart's with them. But then at the same time, you're like, I need people to get stuff done in the trenches. It's, it's, it's tough. And people, some people love being in the trenches. So I, the, the best advice, if I were to zoom back and get the best advice, would be find people that are that love to support entrepreneurs, love to be a joiner. You know, this thing about being a founder or a joiner. Mm. Um, find joiners. Find people that love to be close to entrepreneurs and want to support and love that and will just go to the wall to be a part of a team, an organization that's led by a strong entrepreneurial mindset, right? <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I love that. It would seem like a lot of people like um it seems like a lot of people don't really understand that cuz there's a certain level that like I feel like a lot of my entrepreneurial skills came from being a part of teams. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that there's a value there for like being a part of a team will make you better when it's your time cuz you get to watch someone else's yeah. mistakes, you know? Yeah, I think back to the founder, I think back to the entrepreneur CEO, I think maybe the best thing I could say to that is to be up front with them day one when you, when you bring them on your team and go, hey, I need a good 18 months to 24 months from you, right? Mm-hmm. Like to be up front, like I, you, I'll be your biggest fan when you, when you, when you go to the next level and, you, and by the way, absolutely mean that, like we'll be your biggest fan, but I need, I need you to be a to grunt this thing out for the next two years, you know, you, are you willing to do that and um, and be willing to put your own ambitions aside for that period? Because otherwise, let me just support you. Let me just support you externally. Don't, don't necessarily have to join my team. Right, right, 
Right. I had to have the conversation with my boss when I joined uh, Gerdau, right? You know, I was working on Project MQ when I got laid off from MenuPad and, and the recruiting company here in Tampa Bay sent me over to Gerdau. And I told him, you know, I'm 100% committed to my nine to five, but I need you to know that I'm running and growing my own company. Uh, and and it's, it's not a liability, it's an asset because everything that I learned while I'm growing my company, I can turn around and bring to Gerdau. And I've done that the last two and a half years. Uh, but it's it's just as important to have that transparency, right? Yeah, right, right. That's right. Do you feel like the that nation looks- needs more entrepreneurs, or it need more um, people in the trenches? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. You know what? Depends one of on the most insulting that. things, by the way, one of the most insulting things that was ever said to me about fifteen years ago. Um, it was a it was a very um, a very successful quasi family member that had a multi multi million dollar business and. Um, and he was only in his, uh, you know, he was mid, 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 uh, age. Right. And I was excited about my entrepreneurial efforts. This was, I was in my late twenties, maybe right around 30. And I was talking with him at this, uh, family party kind of thing about my ambitions around entrepreneurship and what I want to do. And he looked me dead, dead in the eye and said, we need, you know, it, 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 we need more, basically something along the lines, we need more doers and less um entrepreneurs and uh we need but I, th- I thought that was ridiculous because you know because he was sitting on the top of the throne right like he he of course and and i to that point with the conversation we just had there's some truth to that but just squash somebody's dreams like that like that and just to say something that insensitive i thought i'll never forget it it's, it's it stick with me to this day about just how i'll never want to say that to somebody um and, and so that back to that conversation we just had is a very delicate proposition. I think the best way to say that is, like I said to you before, like, give me two years and you'll and I'll be your biggest fan and supporter. So he, he probably could have said that more artfully. Right. Uh, if he had said along those lines. But his thing was more like um, we don't need more of you. We need more uh, soldiers. We don't need more generals. And I'm like. Well, what if a general? What if a general is who I'm meant to be? What if that's who's in my blood? What if that's what I'm determined to be? Don't don't tell me that that's not what I can't do, right? Or I shouldn't right. do. I thought that right. just I'll never forget it. It just hit me hard. Right, right. Um, right. I know you were about to ask a question too. If you're still there, I think we may have lost Red Infant, Red Infamy because uh, she had a question. Uh, yeah, she was like saving one. <laughs> All right, let's, I'm, when she comes, there here. you are. All right. There she goes, there right. she goes, Wolf. No, that, it's just that, that, no, my friend's dog was like crying. So I was like, buddy, no. Um, I did have a question uh, and it, it stems off what y'all was talking about as far as like, do you think the, like what Derek said, do you think there needs to be more entre- entrepreneurs versus doers? We see how our, kind of like how the education system is like, kind of grooms you to be more of a doer than an entrepreneur so being a professor that taught entrepreneurship because even when I was in college and I seen one of my friends was going to school I was like you going to school for entrepreneurship (laughs) like it was just weird (laughs) uh, to see that as a major because you're so conditioned of the traditional that okay I go to school to work for someone else so how was it to kind of change and mold the mindset of students young adults that this is your time to actually be an entrepreneur and why to do so more than just being a doer yeah you just put your finger i I love what you just said there because this is a very controversial thing i'm one of the least best spokesmen for being a professor of entrepreneurship right because (laughs) uh you cannot learn entrepreneurship in a classroom and uh and i'm not afraid to say that i'm i'm out there with that right you can't right it, and i and i i'm day one of my class it's my opening my opening talk right with with the students i also tell them if they're comfortable middle class they're also way behind in the entrepreneurship game i i, I say this to my class if you're white middle class i'm looking out in the room and luckily i have a lot of brown and black students in my class 60 so students university of south florida is very diverse i say if you're white middle class class you are way behind in the camp you, you probably are, you just don't you, you're gonna really have to fight harder because uh, if you if you aren't pushing against something if you aren't fighting against something if you're not trying to claw your way out of something uh, you, you you're lacking a lot of the essence of entrepreneurship but back to your question right I mean, I um, so so here's the thing um, and the other thing you said there also is something I say that people scratch their head when I say it is that going to university, 
going to college is about learning how to work for other people. It's about how to be able to go become employed. And that's, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, kudos to those people. They don't have the affliction that we have. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? The misery of, of not being comfortable working for the people, the misery of being completely always unsettled and completely just, uh, that is a blessing. So I, I think it's a wonderful thing. So I don't discount it, but for sure, if someone were to go and study entrepreneurship 100% at the university level, I would also scratch my head. I feel like it's a great little, uh, ask, it's a great augmentation. It's a great little, it's a great thing. Like my class, it's, an, it's like, it's, it's a minor, it's an elective, it's something for them to think about, something for their future. I, I actually strongly discourage my student groups to like go immediately start a company. Matter of fact, I feel like the more I can discourage someone, one, the more that that if they're still willing to do it, the more likely they're capable or or they're um, kind of yeah, uh, mind trick. worth <laughs> to use it, right? Yeah, because yeah, because really the real answer is they everyone mostly should go out, get a job, learn an industry learn the problems of an industry, get get some experience, get your legs underneath you, um, and try to find a problem to solve, because let's be real, entrepreneurship, we know this, if, if you're not solving a problem, if you're not bringing something to the market, um, that you don't have a deep, deep knowledge of what the hell you're talking about, um, you're setting yourself up for a lot of um, a lot of struggle or failure. So, so it's like, you know, going to college, just, plan to graduate, get a job, and then put your five-year plan in place. Put your five-year plan in place. Do you, do you feel like uh, the current popularity of entrepreneurship is that false marketing? Uh, you call it an affliction to be an entrepreneur, yeah. Yeah. but when you look on social media, you yeah. swear that's the lifestyle to have, and if you're yeah. not doing that, you're a loser. Boy, they yeah, dropping gems on y'all tonight, man. I didn't know. I didn't know you guys were gonna get right into the raw. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they dropping right. gems. I mean, y'all talking about what? This fire. <laughs> Putting what? the raw, dirty finger in the wound. No, on I this mean, one. Uh, dig it up. Yeah, yeah. No, really. Um, the romanticism of entrepreneurship is bullshit, of course, and the success bias that exists out there is completely um, uh, unhelpful. Uh, it's without a doubt, right? Entrepreneurship is a lonely, difficult struggle. Uh, it's a financial risk. It's a psychological risk. It's a reputational risk. It's a personal risk. But here's the thing: what I always tell people, like people think about that and they go, "Wow, that sounds scary." I go, "You know what? People who have it in them don't care. If it's in you, if that's who you are, the more I, the, every time I rattle that off, the more excited you get. <laughs> I mean, it's like." As if you get more excited, the more I talk about Facts. that, all that risk, the, the, the more it's, then the more you are that person. Like, right. that's it. If that's, if, it's like, so you don't even, people that go for it, like, they don't, they, they hear that, they go, they blow that off and it gets some more fired up. So, um, but for sure, uh, so that, the problem is when you lure, when you lure unqualified, when you lure people that really aren't armed and equipped to be successful at, when you lure them into the game, uh, th this is the real the real problem, right? They're not really ready, and they don't really understand the grit. They don't understand. Everybody on this, I'm looking at everybody on this Zoom car now. I know all of you. We're all putting on our, our our best personalities. We're all doing our. We're all, but we. I know everybody on this Zoom call. We all go back in the quiet of our own time, and we're like, man, I got a thousand things to do. Uh, I got a hundred people counting on me. I got to keep showing up in my A game. And and this is brutal, but but you you live for it, and but nobody really knows. They see all this, they go, wow, these 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 cats are chilling, and everything is all great. But but everyone on this call, we know that it's um, yeah. that this is a big. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. We all know. Yeah. There's a all, fire. There's a fire right outside yeah. the screen. Right yeah. Right. It's, it's, right it's, it's a war every day, but it that's is. kind of the adrenaline rush yes. to it. Um, is seeing the. It's being a new frontier on a lot of fronts, especially in the industry um, that we're all in. It's like, oh, this is new land. And there's a lot of risk because there's a lot of uncertainty. And that's some of the things, period, with entrepreneurship. It's tons of uncertainty. Like, because one case study does not mean that's going to work for you at all. Exactly. So I'm happy you said that. Yeah, a lot of stuff that is, it's like what Derek was saying on Instagram. You see a whole bunch of them 
like it's so glamorous okay he got the maserati he got the keep all louis vuitton bag with money in it and it's like bro we know you just didn't get that <laughs> but it's trying to sell that you could be an entrepreneur in like a week and it's like no because i got a taste of that in a day and i was like what the you know what i'm saying so i love Ooh. that you speak some truth into that there is a such thing as entrepreneurs doers and people that is going to support and there's some people that's built for it and there's just some that's just not and people need to know that that exists yeah the more the more you like being out on the ledge the more likely you can be a successful entrepreneur and i mean scary ledge i mean like i don't know how i'm gonna make my next rent payment mortgage payment but i'm okay with that i mean that's just it like if, if that just invigorates you and that like fires you that's just which gets more and more complicated when you have dependents. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah you right. guys are at that real, yeah. your next, uh, y'all are at that real next level. I don't have no yeah, kids yeah. yet, so I be jumping on the legs yeah. by myself. So yeah, I, I don't have any right. kids yet, Lisa. And, yeah. and it's Marcus, still, you got a toenail on the leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you ain't hanging off. Marcus is hanging off. <laughs> don't drop me. Don't drop me. <laughs> I mean, Where's my parachute? I heard there was a golden parachute. Where's this shit at? You know, I only want to add, uh, I mean, wow, Alan, you've been dropping gems and red too. And Derek, with like five words, you've opened my mind to like all different thought Derek processes. Derek got the 60 think, minute questions. I think <laughs> that, yeah, right? Um, Derek I think be hard every time. I mean, every time we're coming hard from Derek. Right. From, from, like right from the start. I had my, I almost broke the button. Um... <laughs> I think what's what's what I only want to add to uh, I love everything you said Alan, about like you not needing like you know Marcus we're gonna play a little game right now what's something that I always say something over something what do I always say substance over hype <laughs> no but that was good guess that was good but I'm always saying He's not been listening experience well yeah yeah you, you experience need, over you, yeah. you need the three uh on the what's that who, uh, who wants to be a millionaire the three lifelines you better start calling <laughs> it lifelines. please it's um, been a long weekend um experience over education because i think yeah, that, yeah you say that all the time yeah because i just think that in my career at least what pushed me at that level of like moderate success meaning like i just wasn't eating crap with a grin anymore was recognizing that you know what uh, Alan's right. You got to go out there, and if you're not making a, if you're not improving upon a, a, or bringing a solution, you at least need to go out and try, so you can fail, so you can see like what you're not bringing. You got to fail. You got to go out, and you got to fail because if you're not failing, you can't learn, and if you can't learn, yeah. then you can't earn. If you can't earn, then you might be in a worthless situation. But you can't know any of that until I feel like you go out and you know like try like i feel like you have to i feel like the thing with entrepreneurship is like uh mark cuban always says want entrepreneur right like you want to do it yeah. you want to do it you could yeah. want to like i know that i would do it this way or that way but you don't want to take the nuances you know what i'm saying you don't want to take the nuances chris laporte says in the chat passion over paychecks and it's true you should put your passion to care mm -hmm. uh to put you out there because you would do that for free and not get paid anyway and then right. that way you could go through it. I feel like as long as you get, you know, failing, Will Smith be saying fail fast. Like, you know, I just think if you go, it's, it, there's so much education in experience. So I always say experience over education because you keep learning whatever you want. But until you fall on your face and get the scratch, you're just going to look at other people and go, wow, that scratch looks real cool. He looks tough. He looks, but you don't have yeah. anything for yourself. You don't have a story for yourself. You don't have that stuff for yourself. And I think that's very, yeah. very, 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 very important. If you are one of those people who want to be an entrepreneur, you, you don't care about living risky or anything like that, but that's only part of it, right? Like you can have that attitude, but as it comes to getting skills five years year later, six years later, seven years later, eight years later, you got to keep messing up. You know what I'm saying? I read somewhere that um, that like Jack Ma from Alibaba got like rejected from like sixty jobs. Yeah. yeah. One being like KFC, they was like, "Man, you can't handle this chicken, yo. You gotta go." Hey, you don't is, know what you're doing. Uh, hey, is Sebastian is Sebastian the only one with the button? Because I went hit that button like five times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody else got the button, but I got the button for this, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care. That's all. This I'm is all for you. This is all, Alan. This is all for you, Alan. 
<laughs> oh man, hit him up. That's good. Uh, I, I agree. The only thing I would add that's about, about this whole failure thing is I would I like to say it differently because failure sucks. It's like going into a game thinking you might lose and no, you, you can't think like that. So I would say, yeah, um, you, you got to get out there, take a, I would say, take that risk, be willing sure. to fail, be willing to take a chance, but then actually fight like hell to not fail because uh, failure is overrated, right? It's like, if you think about any any sport, any anything we do in life, like um, the key to it is to get in the game, try like hell to win that game, and uh, and never think about losing or failing that game. And then when it happens, you know you 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 you're shocked. You you need to be shocked when you lose and when you fail. Right. And then just like a good a fighter or a sports situation, you'd be like, holy crap! I need to learn from that. Get humble. And then dust yourself off and get back in the game, and then and then plan to not lose the next time, you know. And you might lose the next time, but but I think it's an important subtlety I like to put out there um, is that is to not is to just it take failure off the table, take losing off the table, but it will happen to you. But but by all means, don't even. It's a really interesting thing, right? To not let that be in your brain, but know that it will happen. Um, but the key, the whole takeaway from that is to get in the game. And fight like hell to win the game, because this is all a big game. I, I, I think that you guys might have seen this in my bio, but I now I run a peer group of ultra high net worth individuals. It was a new a new project that came to me last year, and these are all self made entrepreneurial, um, majorly successful uh, people that have who who were able to break through into into major success financially. And I've been studying these guys, right? And there's some women in here as well. And I've been studying how they pulled it off and at the end of the day they were they all took major risks and major chances and made them pay off and um you know some of them are honestly I've got a couple of them thinking right now didn't really fail much along the way and that sounds sounds ridiculous but um can a failure yeah, can be pretty can be pretty devastating can be so i would yeah. say try to have zero fail i know this is very into the spirit of what you were saying, Sebastian, was get in the game, take risk, and take your chances, right? But I want to add to that, like, try to win the first game, try to win every yeah. game. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Right? No doubt. I definitely Like, agree this podcast, that. this podcast right here, you guys aren't trying to do this on practice. You're trying to make this successful. You're not trying to play to lose here. You're trying to play to win. And that's I think right. that should be that's said right. more. That's right. That's right. Tell them. Tell them again. <laughs> Tell them. Right, right? <laughs> Tell them. That's right. Right? Wow, that's right. That's right. So, Alan, what advice would you have to uh, the entrepreneurs that are trying to prove their successful entrepreneurs at the expense of proving their successful husbands or successful uh, parents? Mm. Yeah, yeah. You mean like uh, like Marcus? You talking about? <laughs> <laughs> he, Marcus, he's talking, talking about, about you. Marcus right now. He's talking, talking about, about you. <laughs> he's talking about you. Everybody needs some help, all right? <laughs> I did all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know for me i did i tried to balance it I, I only had the one one child and it was a little easier that way and uh and i did i did have to go in and out of working for others versus my startups and i had to go back and forth on that um a lot in, in my in the 20 years that i raised my daughter uh and it was there was some tough times in there that were it was tough to provide for my family and also um try to start my next startup and uh, I don't know, man, there's no secret. I think it gets back to a lot of what we said. Like, it's either in you, you're either like this, you know, afflicted breed of person that you just can't not push and take chances. I mean, in my book, I talk about my quits. I, I quit, I quit, this is a true story, guys. I quit two six-figure jobs with almost no savings. Like, oh. walked, walked. That's I mean, crazy. I was making almost $150,000 a year and I walked. Um, with with just maybe one month paycheck in the bank and a stay home mom um, for a wife. My wife was uh, stay was was raising our daughter most of our life. She's not a career person. She never was her thing. And I always want to embrace what she wanted in life. And she just loved being a mom and all the things that went into that. And um, uh, and so I was always living on the edge through, through my raising my daughter and my family. And we had like these feasts and famines, right? These these big swings. And it was always really, she was always conflicted when I would score another six-figure job, and then I would walk away from it. And I mean, I gotta tell you, 
I don't know how many many women that would have put up with what I did in my my life. Man. I mean, I don't know how many women that would have put up with it, especially in their position, not not working in a in a. She didn't have her own, um, you know, uh, career for herself. So she was counting on me being a you know stable provider. So I had to pull that off during that period and. Uh, um, Shout out to wife, man. Shout out to wife. You got yeah. me. That counts. That counts, yo. That counts. That she, I'm going to tell you, man, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'll be frank. I've never said this any, to anybody before, but I kind of picked her out for this reason. <laughs> I, kinda, I, I mean. Nah, it, it matters. I mean, it matters. It, I, matters. it does matter. Yet it matters. matters. Of course it was. No, it, was it does. Because if you don't have anybody was, that supports you, it's a wrap. It was love <laughs> at first sight, and it was physical attraction. It was all of those things for sure. But, this, but also there was this dimension to my wife, her name's Ashley, where she was just this infinite like supporter kind of person. Like no matter what I said I wanted to do, she was just on board with it. And insane, like insane, like I knew that going in that I needed, I, mean, I was a young man at the time. I didn't, there was a lot of factors, but I knew that that was important. Um, and it, it really played out well because I took these really crazy moves in my life um, that I don't know who, how many partners would have supported that, and she did. And um, I mean, we're. I, I look back, I laugh. I just can't believe. Like I said, you know, not no, like financially, financial roller coaster, and then, uh, but but willing to keep supporting it. Um, I just, I've met, I know a lot of people. I just don't know anybody else that would have supported me that way. I just don't. Shout out to Ashley. We, this so the reason got, I asked you this question is called the gem <laughs> button, and you seem like you have a gem, so I'm gonna hit it. Okay. All right, hit it. <laughs> That's for you. That's for you, Ash. We That's a, hey, she's supporters. having a great birthday week. This will, I'm going to tell her about tonight because I, she's on a. We, I spent the whole week on her birthday, so this is this this, this will is be the ice cream. This is the cherry. This is the cherry. <laughs> for you, girl. Because I now I'm learning that. from him. The thanks why, to you. I said the reason why I asked you that is because I I witnessed entrepreneurs picking uh, based on their mindset, and they mm. fail to. Uh, focus on the partner mindset as well, realizing mm -hmm. that, that you might be built to be an entrepreneur, but have you picked the right partner uh, for your journey as well? Yeah, yeah, I think I think for sure that's like a partner in a business that matters. But I think I got lucky uh, on this because um, um, I did. And but it was the opposite. What you think you would think I would have picked someone in my my life journey partner that would have been uh, uh, business minded, entrepreneurial minded, maybe even a, a career that could support my up and downs. Right. I got none of that. Um, I have, I, have, I, my, my wife who I fell in love with at 18 years old, 19 years old. Um, she just was this, this, in this infinite well of support kind of person. Right. And, uh, and she had no business, no business acumen or experience. Like she just, I, I run everything by her to this day. Like if it doesn't pass the test with her, then it is, it is a no go, right? Right. And um, so she, she is. Just <laughs> yeah, she is. Right. Oh my God, you have no idea. People don't. But know. that's how like, it's supposed to be. Really. You know, in a yeah. partnership and a kinship. That's how it's yeah. supposed to be. Like you're supposed to go to your significant other to be an advisor oh. to be like, okay, I need a second, I need a second oh. choice because you know me more than anybody else. You know, so yes. that's this how, it's how to be. crazy is this? What I'm talking about right now, and, and <laughs> she will she will say like, you know what? That's not so. That's not crazy. And she has this way of putting her own self in. I don't know how she does it, but she'll like give me an honest, supportive opinion, even though it's not in her best interest to the family. <laughs> Right. It's incredible, guys. I, I wish that upon anybody. Uh, that's what a true friendship is, a true partnership. I would say that my relationship with my wife is the, probably closer than any business partnership ever. That's what you would want to partner. So if I would advise somebody on finding a business partner, this is probably the template I would use. And, and if I study all the great partners in the, of all great businesses that have been successful from you know Microsoft to Google on and on, it's this kind of um, unconditional uh relationship right like i'm never going to make a selfish uh thought i'm going to always like put the bigger vision of of who we are ahead of my own personal interest and by the way you guys know this i've got a lot of friends and advisors and i can always tell even when they try to hide it they're, they're giving me advice or their opinion on something and I can always see when they're really giving me an opinion that really kind of serves them a little bit, mm. and even though it's not really clear, they're kind of telling me their advice, but they're really, it's really something that's gonna flow back to them somehow versus somebody who really just says, you know, 
that really takes it on face value and says that sounds you should do that that sounds amazing or 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 so that sounds like or they kind of go eh, mm. they, they get they don't usually say like oh you kind of just give me this look like mm. all right you know, like, you know, <laughs> all right good luck that's that, look, that's that look i care about you man i just can't say what i really want to say yeah, right. you know like and that's 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 beautiful i'm quick to tell marcus all right good luck <laughs> <laughs> all right you go know? ahead <laughs> And he knows that that's not that's me being facetious. <laughs> yeah. It's like I, I want to like it, I want to love it, I love you, man. But I just can't. All right, I can't. You do can it. appreciate that that honest that honesty that candor, right? It's yeah. You, you need that. You need someone to, to check you so that you can make the best decision possible. But with a good, with a really unconditional heart, man. It, yeah. It's yeah. hard. It's yeah. hard to find somebody like that in your life. You got to really keep is. them. You got to keep them close when you bump into them. I, I agree. I'm gonna gem that up because. I think that's really important. I think it, in my journey, that's of everything you said, that's really important. You got to be able to weed out yep. people who can see things from you that they like and want, and then you be naturally right. You're a networker, so you start bringing people in, and then you don't notice. At least it took me a long time to start having that discernment you had between who's telling yeah. you for their gain and who's telling you for your gain, right? So that's really important, and I think the two sides of it is like. When you find someone who's, uh, you know, doing it, I love that you said, like, you st it still happens to you because you don't have to cut them off or whatever. Like, all the memes are like, no. I'm cutting you off. You're a snake. Like, it's not mm -hmm. always like that. It's not always like that. It's just you measure the relationship. But when you find someone, that's why, like, Derek, Marcus, Tamika, like, I I've known all y'all, our own personal relationships. I see them as what they are. And Tamika, we go far back as, like, 10 years because I know when that's happening. I decide, okay... She just told me something that had nothing to do with helping her. She's looking out for me. So I'm going to stay close to that automatically, right? Because, like, that, that's, that's right. good to have around. Instead of just, like, oh, you know, like I said, you always see, like, oh, cut the snakes off and whatever, whatever. Like, that part, whatever. But, like, what about the good part? Like, yo, make sure yeah. you're staying with those people, too. And another thing I wanted to ask yeah. um, that I think is probably going to be my favorite thing of this whole, because it's a question that I talk with Marcus all the time. It's probably the most personal I've gotten. Um, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur for like four years, five years, uh, and I've had all the stuff we're talking about, the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs, all that, on couches, everything. Now, my question is, what did you do and how did you stay psychologically motivated when sometimes you had to go back and take another $100,000 job or whatever? When you're, you got a million dollar idea yeah. and you're building it and you've got yeah. proof and your case studies and you're... But then you just got to stop and go jump back into a job. Like, how does how did you stay motivated to see the end goal through having to, I guess, put your stuff to the side and tell the company you're willing to do that and commit? Like, that's a hard challenge that I'm personally facing, right? Like, yeah. I'm personally facing yeah. that. So I, wanted, I yeah. wanted to ask you, like, for advice on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I, <clears throat> you know, I would say that I... Uh, uh, you know, I did it uh, the same reason you guys would do it. Like I, I needed um, to to put my family in a financial right. uh, better situation. Like I needed to step up for my family, right. right? I needed to step up for my family at different spots, and I had to do that. And I, so I took pride in that. You know, I took pride in that, and and being un, you know, I'm pretty self. We're, as entrepreneurs, we're pretty we're pretty selfish fundamentally because we're pursuing these things, right? But but to be able to kind of be unselfish and go do the thing you should do as a as a as a father and a husband for your family. I think is a, a point of pride that you should put your you should like really embrace that as your as your source of energy. Um, and then I would say at that point, then um, and then and then and then plot your plan, right? And then like consider yourself on a three year. You've got you've built yourself a three year runway, whatever that is, and then chip away at at your exit and your big you know your big next big move, right? And and, and count yourself fortunate to be young enough to have enough that runway to be able to do that a few times, right? And and like I did, I did that a few times from my late twenties to my early forties. I was able to kind of um, take a step forward, two steps back, step forward, step back, and and make those moves. So I think I think that's it. I would just take a lot of pride in doing doing the right thing for for your family. I think there's a lot of value in that. You feel good about that, not just for your 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 spouse and your children, but um, but their parents and just the the beauty of family 
Exactly, and the importance of that. It's, you know, entrepreneurship is important and doing good things in the universe is important, but, you know, providing for your family and doing good by your family is has got to be slightly more important. It's hard for me to say that out loud as an entrepreneur because <laughs> I'm, I'm ultimately a selfish, achievement-driven right, right. person that's, you know, like, I, I can't, I have to say that out loud because that's not my nature. My nature is to just be selfishly out there trying to do the thing that I want to do. So um, I think that, I think you, I think you got to like use that power of like, wow, I'm going to be unselfish. I'm going to do the right thing. You know, my wife and my family didn't sign on for this. Like this, this is something that um, when I took that oath and when I, you know, to have it, to raise the family, I need to follow through on that. I don't know. I've, I'm, I have a relationship with my wife's, um, her, her family and her, her parents, and that just means a lot to me. So sometimes I feel like I just got to step up. So for whatever that's worth. No, that's it. That's what I needed to hear because that's, you know, I'm just at that point where, you know, I'm 30. So it's like, I'm just like, yeah. I know that my I'm operating fine, but I do want to expand my family and do, you know, just different things. So it's yeah. just one of those things where yeah. the offers are coming in. There's no shortage of yeah. offers. So it's like, right. it's just like I've been for from probably 25 right so like 25 26 it's just been like nah no thanks i'm good i'm good i'm taking <laughs> i'm great i'm you know i take the juice off the fact that playstation or twitch or riot or any of them will call and then you like you're like oh i'm being headhunted like this is cool but i would always yeah, like, turn yeah. it down because it's like nah like i got the end yeah. of the game and then yeah yeah but, like, yeah i'm yeah. finally well, here's the thing that. i want to add to that here's the thing i want to add to that is um know that um you're just looking at a few years in the big scheme of things to retrench and to reset and these people these family member these family your spouse and your family are going to be there for you when you make your next move right so it's almost a way of again back to the selfishness of it like you're, you're making a you're reinvesting in yourself you're reinvesting you're redepositing into your so you, if your selfish side of you can say hey let me take care of other people for a while and do what i need to do because these people are going to support me in X number of years when I make my next move, and you're going to need them. You're going to need them, and, and you want them to be full. You want them to be. You want them to be their glass to be full for right. you when you need them again, right? Because you kind of emptied the glass uh, up to that point. Their cup is not full. You want to fill that thing up, and so that when you make your next move, they're all in your corner and support you because you're going to need it. Thank so you. Would I'm you, sad. I, would got, you I got my free consultation. Would you yeah. consider entrepreneurship is more like a treadmill or a mountain climb? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Mountain climb for sure, man. Mountain climb for sure because it's fraught with, uh, you know, just rough conditions and, and risk of injury and you, and, and, you know, wanting to give up and fear of failure and, and, just huge like exhilarating success and achievement look down i mean that's like mountain climb has got all of the cool stuff that entrepreneurship has in it and all of the struggle um you know a treadmill is pretty is pretty boring right yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but honestly but to but i know where you're going with that because you're saying hey life is more like a treadmill and 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 you, you especially if you're trying to be raise a family you're trying to be functional in society like you're right there's this kind of marathon thing sprint versus marathon right and i would say this that if you are for sure if you are you know in your late 20s 30s and you 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 you've you've got a family and you've got a lot of responsibilities you know or you've got to settle into a, a to a treadmill situation you've got to settle into a treadmill situation or a marathon situation there's no doubt about it it's not your plan a when you were a younger person uh, you, you know, when you were single, you, you, you know, you could, it's, you were ready to go conquer that mountain, but you know, you, you, you made some life decisions and by the way, life is short. You'll be glad that you have this, these, these relationships, these, these, these family members, you'll be glad you have this partner in life and these, the children and all the things you're doing. And most people, as you know, people who trade that out, I don't have to go to, I don't have to tell you guys how many miserable, successful, wealthy people there are in the world that don't have anybody that loves them. Yeah, I don't right. want that. I don't yeah. want that. Yeah, I, don't, I know. Then I nobody loves them, right? Uh, turn, um, and and by the way, they oh, they they thanks. boy oh boy, man, they 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 we see them like I see them a lot more than maybe than you do, and it's not pretty. It's not pretty, man. It's yeah, not pretty. I don't want that. I, don't I keep want that. waiting for someone to do that documentary on going around and collecting those case studies because I feel like that's a secret uh, demon that people deal with. Like I I yeah. see. 
uh, the Microsofts of the world and the Amazons of the world that we use as case studies of success. But yeah. if you look at the news, those guys that we champion as being successful lost their wives. Like at the end yeah. of the day, oh, they man. were rock stars yeah. in the office. All the time. Hey, man, round up. Hey, round up, round up, round up all the successful millionaires in your city, and they're all, di- not all, but disproportionately divorced, right. miserable, divorced, miserable sure. people. Sure. I mean, I don't want to be too negative on that because everybody deserves a right to pursue their pursue freedom, sure. you know, pursue sure. happiness, and all that good stuff. But let me tell you, in their darkest moments, is their relationship with the, do their do their kids love still love them? Um, you know, it's one thing to, to lose your spouse and, you know, and, and great, you know, we said divorce and, you know, there's the thing, but the children, man, any, the, the, I mean, to me, the biggest struggle I have in my life, the biggest motivating factor I have is my, the, I can handle disappointment in my wife's eyes much easier. I can handle disappointment in my daughter's eyes. And the day I disappoint my daughter is the day you might as well just shove me in a box right. and throw dirt on, right? Like, it's like, it's like, to me, to me, I don't want to live anymore if I ever disappoint my daughter, right? Yeah, so I, I can only star, imagine yeah. people that cross that line. Yeah. It just, blow, it just that, came from my head around it. I've had, I've run into that problem the last week or so, um, you know, just mm. because I have my day job in, in Mad Arena, I've had Maddie come up to me and say, like, she'll yell, like, daddy, put down your phone. I don't want you to work, right? And she's four, yeah. so she can communicate that, then obviously there's yeah. a problem. <laughs> And let me tell you guys, I mean, you guys are a little younger than me. I've got my do- my daughter's a uh, young adult now, and it's about, honestly, it's 10 times worse. Because when a young adult um, rejects you or judges you or, like, whatever that word is, man, you cannot come back from that. Because with, with children, you can kind of, like what you said, Mark, you can meander through that. You can recover. You never notice. They live in the moment. Things are great. But, man, you d- I don't care if it's a son or a daughter when you're when your young adult son or daughter decides who you are and man it's just it's just oh. another level and you don't really come back from that you can never you, you guys have seen enough movies and you have enough experience in your life to know that you don't once a young adult decides who their parents are you you don't you don't ever fix that that never that never gets fixed like they never you you just you Marcus, you can fix whatever situation you're in with your young children and within a day or two, like it's recoverable. But a, a young adult child does once they decide and they because they, they know you, they know you can't you they, they know they know you better than anybody. They see right through it. Right. And so uh, that's the thing that um, I think that most uh, most people that like trade all that off become hyper successful. We, we kind of sometimes focus on their spouse when they lose their spouse, but I would say the real, the real, the real sad part is when they, what they lose with their children. And the cat's in children. the cradle and the silver spoon. The little boy, <laughs> Louis, the man on the moon. <laughs> right? I got heavy there for a second. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Sebastian. For like, that was good. Like, no, it was good. You was dropping. It got real heavy. It got heavy. I'm done. I'm done. It's funny because, right, it's, funny because <laughs> it's funny because, um, because as he was doing it, the chat is going crazy. Like, love to see this side of entrepreneurship. Thank you, thank you. And I'm like, keep pouring it on. I'm just going to yeah, add the theme song. The, the cat's in the cradle. Everybody it's real. Just... We've all got parents. Everybody think I mean, everything you... is Ferraris and stuff. Right, yeah. it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. And, and, and that's the thing. Like, I'm not there yet, but like, I know I don't want that. Like, what he just said, I know why everybody's getting afflicted in the chat. Because it's like... I'm now at the age, I'm like, damn, dog, you've been doing it for a long time, right? So it's like, you want to spend enough, you want to duplicate this time again, going through the couches and the ups, the downs, and like the yes, but also like the bad. And then like, meanwhile, like you don't have no kids. Or meanwhile, like if you do have kids, you don't want it to end up that way. So like, that's definitely a right. big deal. You know what I mean? I think it's important to balance that. Um, as, as much as it does become, I love you said this affliction and like, you know, how much you want to do it. It's like, I, I'm learning as we're talking and even through Marcus, I learned like I, you know, I'm always talking to him and you can hear Maddie and you know, just the real life of having a kid. And it's just like, I'm like, man, like I got to make sure I know where my priorities in my life are. You know what I mean? And I think, I think, I think, uh, Derek's question was a perfect one, right? So if, I'm kind of characterizing this for a second here, late twenties, going to early thirties. And if you've, you've got relationships and so forth, you've already kind of crossed the Rubicon of, you know, 
trying to be an entrepreneur, all bets in single with no relationships to worry about. So if you are, if you cross that Rubicon, you've got to settle into a, you've got to settle into a, um, into a treadmill uh, marathon situation. You know, you've got to put a longer term steady state plan and markets is probably the perfect blueprint for that. Right. In my opinion, like, you know, you got to take it all down from a boil down to a simmer right. and, and settle in for a, for a nice long March. Right. And say, okay, if you're 28, 29, where am I going to be when I'm 39? And and just just focus on that and go to give up these short term gains. I mean, it's it is trying to win them. It's trying like trying to win a marathon. So yeah. you you've kind of graduated. You're not in the sprinter's class anymore. You're not in the sprinter's class anymore. You just say, I'm not in the sprint. I had my shot. Not sprinter's class. I'm now in the ma- marathon class. Feels like y'all. How do you win a ma- How do you win a marathon? How do you win a marathon? This is my real life. You guys are pouring on me right now. It's true. It's true. It's <laughs> how do you like, win a marathon? You don't burst. You don't blow that energy. You just steady state that energy. You train and you steady state it. You do a little bit by little bit, and you win a longer race. And you, where are you at? You know, how long would it? Tra- how long would it take to train for a marathon to compete at the Olympic level? It's five to eight years, yeah. probably. Yeah. Right. So yeah. there you there you go. It's probably about the same deal. I mean, brilliant. Well, Marcus yeah. or Derek or Tamika, I got all the stuff. I, I I am gemmed up. I am gemmed up. Thank you so much for coming on, Alan. Um, like I I really didn't know what to expect. We, I thought, hey, I thought we had another hour. I was ready to go another hour. <laughs> Lord, he, I mean, he, he's turned up. Level two. Down, man. You got people in the chat yeah, crying, hey, man. Marcus, like, hey, Marcus told me to bring my five gems. I'm only got. Boy, look at him! Look at him! Look at him! <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, 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 do, I do. I have a question. Yes, I have a please, question. please. So since your book came out, of course, during the pandemic, um, a lot of people like including myself was laid off uh, from their jobs and seeing that, wow, with all this time, you know, it's a great motiv- motivator to kind of start something. Have you ever yeah. spoke to any, you know, or seen some reviews from your book saying like, wow, uh, you know, this had helped me and what some of the things, just a quick like excerpt probably from your book that you yeah. would say, because it has quit in it, what would you say yeah. also some things, those type of people like, okay, the working class must quit behavioral wise in order yeah. to jump forth into entrepreneurship. Can I interject real quickly yeah. before you answer with that? Yeah. I, you know how Red asked those like really deep digging questions? She her first interview was at two years old, so she's got. It was not at two years old. <laughs> she's got, she's got years I know, of experience. I didn't, know a, I didn't know we had a journalist on the. Uh, now you see. Yeah, see. Yeah. Okay. I, no, I have a journalist. Born journalist. Good, Born good, for good. it. Um, no, yeah. I appreciate it. But I wait. I want to share with you. I, I was laid off. I, I was. I was my laid off myself in two in in the year two thousand and one, right before nine eleven happened. And it was pretty devastating. I was a younger man, and it was, um, and it was really tough because there was a bad economy. It was a recession at that time, and uh, it was a combination of uh, just being laid off because of a bad economy, but also I wasn't at that moment. I wasn't the highest performer in my company, and I and I have to face the facts on that. And um, and it really. Um, it was pretty devastating for me. I had to like load up a cardboard box uh, in my office, and uh, I had a dear friend. His name was Steve. His name was Steve, and he walked me out to my car, and I'll never forget it. Um, and it was devastating, but it, but it, uh, but it actually opened up a new chapter in my life. That um, I went back to get my MBA and some other things, and, and just kind of got me to Tampa, honestly. Uh, so uh, there's that. I wanted to share that because I've, I've lived it, and it was pretty humiliating for me, but. Number two, I would say from a book perspective that um, the things I would tell people is that, you know, if, you know, as far as starting, there's different types of startups, right? People, the other people don't realize too, is that, that, you know, there are, you know, creating physical, uh, creating a product company or a service company, right? And uh, this is important. Product companies uh, take a lot more uh time and money to develop and a lot of times need investors and things like that and it's a product whether it's a physical product or a virtual product or a software product but it's something that you bake it you make it once and you try to get pe- people to buy buy that thing right. over and over again right and then a services company which is normally not as investable which we don't we, we need to do a part two for this this podcast to get into that but a services company you can a lot of times you can start uh right away uh just off of a skill set that you have and you can um, 
you can do that without a lot of money and, and you can you can just gain attraction and clients. So um, I think most people most people gravitate to starting the services company for obvious reasons because they have a skill set and knowledge and experience. They're able to turn go out and do that thing. And so um, I would say that uh, that, you know, this whole the gig economy and the things you can do in terms of, you know, all the ways you can get hired online. Uh, it makes a lot of sense, but then I, I also talk in my book about the solopreneur's trap and, and this, this, this whole dilemma and trap you can get into as a solopreneur, which um, I actually do a whole talk on that, on that uh, topic. So it's, you, in other words, you can, you can kind of get, you can kind of become in business for yourself quickly on the services side, but you can get kind of plateaued and kind of stuck there pretty fast if you don't understand that really, and I'll just give you the punchline, that when you're going to start a services company, most people are thinking to do the thing that they love and get paid for the thing they love, which is great. But they, but they, but if they want to avoid that trap and dilemma, they really should be trying to build a company day one, which is really hard to do. Meaning, like you've got to start thinking of yourself as uh, not necessarily the one who does the work, but you got to start thinking about how can I hire employees. It sounds crazy, but if you really want to position yourself for growth and success and for all the beautiful benefits of, of, of wealth and freedom with of business ownership, um, you, you can't do that as a solopreneur. I mean, I look at like, uh, even like this, you know, podcast you guys are doing, you're having to do a lot of work, right. To make all this work and so forth. So I would be challenging this group to say, okay, what if I, you know, how could you, how could you put a, a, a a team or an infrastructure and process that could somehow do this without you where you just showed up and you were just the talent i would challenge this group to say could you make yourself the talent only and you just had to click on and then you were off that sounds of course almost impossible but that's the difference between services companies that go can go to the next level and the ones that just kind of get stuck or fizzle out right you got to get somebody to, to check the microphone levels. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. step one. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure the recording is on. Yeah, for sure. And it, for sure. and it, and it, and by the way, it's very counterintuitive because you're doing, you're doing what you're doing because you love it and it's a big challenge yeah. and it's a lot of fun. You do what you do. And I don't care if I'm talking about a graphic designer or a writer or d developer or whatever. Right, right. So it's a real mind bender to try to, to get your head around that. But the people who figure this out sooner be become, they, they're the ones who become, you know, financially, they get the financial breakouts because they somehow can detach themselves from the product, from the work product, right? I've, I've struggled with that. And that's the reason I write about it and speak about it so much because I personally struggle with it so much, right? And so that's, that's a little bit of a thing there um, that I, yeah, I would, co when I coach a, people. We each other with so many hats. Like, okay, mm -hmm. we're this, 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 and that. But yeah. in order to make it grow, it's like, okay, I need someone else to wear that hat because I got right. It, it becomes heavy, you know. Just having all that on you becomes heavy. So yeah, I've been yeah. feeling it a lot lately. Uh, yes. So, so your ability, so your ability to attract people and somehow not just pay for them or get like somehow can you get others? Because as great entrepreneurs are magnets. Great entrepreneurs are magnets of talent and capital and lots of other things. Your number one skill, the ones that really go next level are the ones that really are just fundamentally magnets, right? So you have to think of yourself as more of a magnet than a doer or that, like, can you somehow convince or attract people to do all the work that goes into generating the ultimate product? And man, I'm telling you, that is hard. Like, I'm, I'm looking at everybody on the screen and I know that I would argue this is almost an, an impossible ask of everybody on the screen, right? Because why? You love doing what you do. Right. So how can I, how can you possibly try to separate yourself from this? And plus you're happy, you're probably perfectionist and you know, it needs to be just right. So how do you like, how do you do that? And it's uh, that's the biggest thing. But when I study all the folks that I work that have crossed over, they somehow, that's why some of the sloppiest uh, entrepreneurs are the most financially successful. Let that sink in for a second. The, it just is true. <laughs> the ones that are just not as married or attached to their product and service, what they're doing, they kind of are, but they're kind of not. They're more focused on like gro on focused on growth, which is anathema for people like us. Like they're the ones who break out and become, you know, super, right. you know, successfully yeah. wealthy. Right. And people that are really, really focused on their craft and doing it great are the ones who struggle and kind gift, of plateau. It's a gift and a curse. It's yes. It's a gift and a curse. Trying to yes. be per perfect when 
it might be perfect to somebody else but you're just making it like it gotta be like this but somebody might think that it's the world to them just just get it right. done so well it's more about what your goal is right so if your goal is to create an amazing work product you know you can make a, a record that you know just a few people enjoy or is your goal to create wealth and freedom and if your if your goal is to create wealth and freedom you've, you've got to start divorcing yourself a bit from the thing you love and it's just it's I'm, I'm sorry if you if you study people in music or anything you, if you really dig in i was just reading an article today on buzzfeed of all places about these actors that um that hated the, the some of they hated being on the movie sets of some of the more their more iconic movies but they they secretly just were like i don't love this but i got to do this they like literally at some point it, it, you've got to again divorce yourself a bit from what you if you really want to go to, it sounds like a, it's it's a bit of a it's a big trade-off and un unfortunately people don't realize that 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 next level doesn't it's come sacrifice. cheap and, it, and it, it doesn't come cheap and it and it doesn't you don't get to stay intact you don't get to stay intact at the next level take sacrifice definitely yeah definitely take sacrifice so yeah so my, where it's what your game plan is your blueprint and it can't just be about creating a great product um unfortunately the the, the it doesn't get it doesn't work out that way you study anybody who whether it be movie makers or, or music anybody they all had to like compromise this detachment that had to happen and it's kind of a dirty little secret like i said the article i was reading today about about these actors that, that really kind of hated the movies that they were or the scenes they were the things they were doing but they it's a little dirty little secret about next level success I love it. Sorry to leave it on a negative note, but I'm sorry. But nah, it's real. <laughs> it's real. And you guys have to take it. You better it's take real. it because the it's man real. knows what he's talking about. In fact, I'm a purchaser yeah, of the it's, book. Yeah, it's real. I need to, I need to gain it's more real. of these insights because another thing that people don't get is I love that you were, one, I'm going to read your book so I can learn more, but two, you were reading the article on BuzzFeed so you can learn more. And that's another that's thing right. I've been telling people like, you know, I feel like it's direct correlation. The more you learn, the more you earn. It's like direct correlation because I feel like I feel like reality in itself, and not to get too deep on you guys, but like reality in itself, like the if you even break down the dichotomy of the words, like real reality, right? Like reality, that's what it's. It's a breakdown of that word. It's only what you know, right? Like it's only what you know. Your reality is what you know. Like you, it, if something went by you in the world and you didn't know it, you would immediately <laughs> it's not a part of your world. You would anything. Uh, that you don't know it. That's right. But so to me, if you know more, you're more powerful That's for right. most situations that come up. So to hear you're still even gaining insights, like you're not trying to be an actor or anything, but you're making adjacent comparisons to things. That's only empowering you to know more about opportunities that come up. So I feel like uh, that's why I'm going to read your book. And um, I just feel like the more you learn, the more you earn. So even though right there, like it might not have been the highest note. You still dropped a lot of these. Well, and not only the book, thank you, but only the book, but Marcus knows this. We, um, our conference, uh, the last weekend of August, we've just decided to go virtual on this conference because this, this Delta variant <laughs> sure. thing that we're dealing with. Sure. We had this really amazing in-person event uh, conference scheduled for the end of the, uh, the month of August, and Marcus is one of our marquee speakers. Uh, he knows all about it. We've been having a, uh, just a, a blast putting this thing together. Um, and we've just decided over the weekend that we just need to move this thing to virtual, which breaks my heart, man. Breaks my heart because look how far we've come. And we we put this, we booked this, we put this thing together two months ago. So excited to see that we were able to like get back to in-person events. And here I am, uh, here we are uh, having to do that. But um, the good news is that we're going to be able to drop the ticket prices, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's yeah. good news. So, you know, double-edged sword. It's a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing. So we're going to be able to open it up to a lot more people. You know, we had this this really amazing uh, Tampa Bay destination type of event. It was you know several hundred dollars to attend, but now we can. Um, now I'm excited. This week we're going to announce the uh, the conversion to virtual and and just open this thing up to just a lot more people. And um, so stay tuned. I appreciate you guys having me on on this on this podcast tonight. Alan, can you talk a little bit more yeah, before we, we go? Yeah. If you talk a little bit more about the podcast, the podcast this week, yeah. on the podcast, the conference, talk yeah. a little more about, about the conference. Yeah, I'll just make it short and sweet because we've had a hell of a conversation. But I would say, just in general, I just I just personally booked uh, you know twelve of, of the most amazing people that I knew in the. 
Tampa Bay area and there's a couple of people from the out of state that are also in that mix. I just tried to book the most amazing people that I knew to uh, do a conference with me and to basically um, share their stories and their best wisdom on, um, you know, unlocking their future. It's unlockyourfuturenow.com. And it's all about just helping people. A lot of the stuff we talked about tonight, just about looking forward and how do you, whether you're going to stay in a job or you're going to be an entrepreneur, either way, like how do you like make the most of your future? And from people that have incredible insights to that, who are taking chances, who've learned a lot. Um, people like Marcus and again, these other 11, 11 speakers. And, uh, and we've got this tremendous diversity on this group. You know, I think it's almost half women and half men. It's, it's just a, it's a crazy lineup. So unlockyourfuturenow.com. We're going to flip this thing to virtual this week. And, um, you know, we already were tracking for a few hundred people when it was in person. I think we'll, we'll, we'll go, we're going to be a little, a, a bigger number before this thing is uh, actually turned on live. Well, I threw it in the chat for y'all. It's unlockyourfuturenow.com. Very impressive website, by the way. And a very Thank great you. headshot from you and Marcus. I'm sold already. Thank you. Thank you. If people if people just put their email address in, they'll get the update. This When we flip this thing to virtual, because it's not official, this is the week we've, we've literally not made it public. But as soon as it is, they'll get a notification on the email. Right. Incredible. You go and, and drop the rest of the gems you have on your sheet of paper here, like rapid fire in the next two minutes. Can you do <laughs> rapid fire? Two, 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 two minute challenge. Yeah, yeah, give them to us. Give them to us. I got the button ready. One to two minute, two minute challenge. All right. In fighting right, games, we, we call this a rushdown. So I'm gonna give Sonic hey, boom. You, Instead of that, I'm gonna give you, you Sonic booms. You ready? Go ahead. All right. Because you know, if, if Marcus gives me an assignment, I don't take that lightly. Right, let's um, do it. Number one. Number one. Uh, number one. I said is fail, failure is overrated. So we hit that earlier. Um, boom. <laughs> number two, uh, there's a deeper why, you know, uh, if you're, I said it earlier, if you're not clawing your way out of some kind of uh, difficulty from your childhood or something that you're overcoming as a family, um, you're at a disadvantage. So people that have a deeper, deeper why that sometimes is in a really dark place, um, that's the most powerful force in the universe. And it's not just me saying that, you go study just go pick 100 super successful people and you'll always find that to be true. They were, they were driven to overcome something, right? Um, confidence is something that, you know, is acquired. Uh, you can build it. You can build it brick by brick. A lot of people don't feel themselves confident enough to be a startup founder to go do amazing things. But the thing is, if you put the work in, you can build on that confidence. You know, Marcus, I won't name names, but you and I know a few mutual uh, successful uh, high profile founders in this town. And believe it or not, in Tampa Bay, they're introverts. They, they're not fundamentally confident, forward uh, people. So sometimes we get fooled by people that are super, that have the gift of gab and they're confident speakers and all that stuff. That, that They look like the people that should be successful. What you really find, and this is true with my, my, my members of my Tiger group as well, that the people who really break out are usually more substantive, often more quiet, uh, introverted, a little more shy. And people need to need to hear that, right? So you can build on that confidence, but they're but they're steely in their confidence. They build it with real fundamental um, substance. Um, if you've got <laughs> if you've got a lot of del if you're if hey, if you've got a lot of fear and insecurity, if you got a lot of fear and insecurity in your life, those are those are those are good things. Those are powerful things that you should you should consider as badges of of uh, of success. Um, and it fundamentally gets down to how bad do you want it. Really, at the end of the day people who want it more than others get it so it, 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 it's that simple right like what i can't say it any simpler than that um if you struggle from depression and anxiety you probably have more likelihood to be successful entrepreneurship right that's just not me saying that the data has shown that research has shown that right so Panic really boom. because de depression and anxiety correlates with high achievers okay so just know that if you if you got that like know that that's a positive thing so when you're in your darkest times know that hey um you're you're building up this force that's going to be going to serve you when you can come out of those darker places right um and then i just get into some other things uh with practical things like um and you're going to start up if you you got to be either solving a pain uh creating a gain or a pleasure so i call it the pain gain or pleasure spectrum Panic. right and i love that and the more that. and the closer your startup is to solving a pain the more likely you're going to be successful by way of risk like there's less risk on the pain side of things so a lot of people are driven to like do things that are, you want to do really cool things that are that are more pleasures like putting good uh pleasure in the world just know that um 
that's uh, on the higher risk of the spectrum. There's a lot. Um, people are, we know this, people are less willing to part with their dollar. People will pull their money out to solve a pain. They're usually reluctant to to pull money out to solve to a potential pleasure, right? right? Because right. this gets down to economics, right? So if you can align your startup with pain solving, like helping somebody solve a problem, you, you're always going to be on the safe side of the equation. It may not be as sexy and as exciting as you'd like it to be, but if your if your goal is wealth and freedom, be on the on the pain solving side of the equation, less so on the pleasure providing side of it. Um, and then of course, I, you know, I've got a, a last thing I mentioned. I mentioned the solopreneur's dilemma and the solopreneur's trap, and this thing called the gravity of death. <laughs> you can see I've got a lot of morose themes in my talks right oh, they're real but, uh, they're but, real <laughs> but know that but know that anything you do in startup world and this goes for your life your career everything you do when you're trying to get a, an advancement or a promotion or a raise if you feel like that the life is pulling on you to be to fail just know that that's real and it's true it is right it's true and just i call it the gravity of death and it goes it, it goes to your personal life all the way to your startup life so just know that if you sign up for achievement to be a high achiever, whether in your career, your business life, or in startup, just know you're going to be fighting this. This is a, this gravity that's pulling on you, that's trying to pull you down and, and bring you to failure. That that thing is real, and it's not going away. Embrace it, and just look it in the eye and say, "It's it's me. It's me and you every day. This is what we're doing. This is how we're dancing every day." Right? People who who don't aren't trying to pull out the achievement of life. They, they can sidestep that because they're just kind of moving through life and God bless them. They're going to probably have a happier life. But if you if you are achievement minded, just know this this gravity is real. It's an opponent. It's your opponent in life. The, your biggest opponent is that not other people or things. Um, it's this it's this pull of life. Life is not trying to help you succeed. Unfortunately, it's true. Life is not trying to help you succeed. Life is pulling you back. Right. So just get up every day knowing that it's, it's you, that's you and your opponent in the ring every day. And um, the sooner you kind of embrace it and, and look at it and smile and go, really, that's all you got for me today? Because yesterday you were tougher because today you're not as tough as you were yesterday, <laughs> you know, and just have fun with that thing. Right. And just laugh at laugh at it, laugh at it and go, I'm going to be here tomorrow. I'm going to be here the next day. I'm going to be here the day after that. And I'm going to come out on top. So just get used to it. And I think that's how you, and I just want to tell that to people is that um, life isn't, doesn't get, isn't easy, doesn't get easier. And there's no happier message on that. And just let's embrace it. And let's get up every day and, um, and stare it down. Tra tra and by the way, trash talk that thing too. Tra that's like right. I just did trash talk. It, man. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, and just look yeah. at it and go, I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do, but it ain't going to work. It ain't going <laughs> to work today. today. You might get me. Saved. <laughs> once in a while you're gonna get once in a while you're gonna get me i'm gonna be down but i'm gonna be back tomorrow but not out so, baby i'm man. down but not, <laughs> not out. out that's the difference right? not out not out not tomorrow you might yeah. get me today you might have got me today but i'll be back tomorrow and you won't have me I'm, I'm really grateful that you came on today thank you so much um thank you really, guys. thank you for taking the time we're really Appreciate grateful it's an honor really it's grateful. an honor so much thanks for giving me the extra time and uh i can't Hope I can come back. In yes, the next yes, of Marcus. And, thank uh, you for bringing Alan. We awesome. all were kind of like Marcus told us, like, "No, oh, you got to meet him. Like, it's incredible." And like, we're just like, "Okay, like, you yeah, know, like, uh, we're always receptive." It's like, but, thank you. Each other for a minute. Or but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like, we're glad. I'm very, very, uh, and I'm, and I know our audience is glad. So many people. Uh, Chris Laporte, um, uh, Dana uh, Gaston, Dana. Um, uh, you got uh, Raymond K. Um, Alexander, Flo, Flo said hi. I should have told you a long time Flo, ago. Flo, I know Flo. Yes. Yeah, Flo said Flo. hi. So, yes. so we have plenty. Lil Zinni, um, Jihan, you. everybody was enthralled. They loved the panel. Another Marcus. Nice. Um, they loved the panel. So thank you. Thank you for well, I can't bringing wait us back. To see we were gone for a while uh, and you brought us back with a bang. So thank you very I'm, much. And you know what? I thought we were done with this virtual thing, but I guess we're not. So I can't wait to see everybody in the end of August for their, our Unlock Your Future conference. We're going to do this. It's we're going to, I'll see, now I can see everybody. Like, like Marcus said, like Marcus said, now, now we got no barriers. Now we can drop these ticket prices and we can have blast. I'm in there. Yeah. I'm in there. All right. I'm in there. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Right. Um, I'm going to sign off so you all can wrap up without me. 
Oh, all right. okay. Well, all right. Well, we usually wrap up with our guest here, but you know, I guess it's, okay, it's, it's, it's busy time I, being I, the I, boss. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm I saying? mean, I just, you know, but uh, if you guys want to wrap up together, we can do that too. Well, yeah. So, I mean, let them know what you got going on. Well, we know uh, Unlock Your Future is next month. Now. Right? Yep. So, we know that's coming, or at the end of the month, not next month, at the end. That's we know right. That's coming up. In August. Um, and then, what about uh, you, Red? What do you got working on, and what are you working on? What do you got working on? What, uh, you working just, on? what are you working on? What am I working on? I <laughs> just got some cool content coming in. Uh, that's that's all I want to say for now. Cool oh, content. it's find, one of those. Wow. <laughs> I got to find Red Infamy on, on Instagram. I'm imagining everything. She's there. Everything is Red Infamy across she's there. the board. Yeah, she's but there. Yeah, Red. Got some, some cool things. I've been gone for a minute, so, you know, mm. got to come back. That's right. That's okay, right. Red. I'm, I'm, I'm following you right now. How about you, right, Dee? What do you, you got going on? Uh, this is the same old, same old grind, man. Great episode today. Thanks again, Alan. Thank you. Marcus, take I love the here. website. I love the website, by the way, D, for your first uh, signed NCAA talent. Okay? Like, that's not, a, <laughs> that's not a game. That's not a game. I want people to know that. Like, High Point Gamer now has NCAA talent, um, five-star recruit talent, uh, representing the gaming world, and that's a big deal because uh, the NCAA he couldn't do that before because now the NCAA just let the kids start taking sponsorship, and for someone to sign with you so quickly, that's just dope. I'm looking forward to see what you guys are working on, and um, yeah, it's just exciting. I just wanted to say that. I never yeah. got to tell you. We haven't seen each other in like two weeks, so I'm glad I get to say that. Facts. Thanks, sir. Big congratulations. How about you, Marcus? What are you working on? I got a lot of code to write tonight. Um, <laughs> 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 but, uh, <laughs> Other than that, I'm stoked about the book, man. The book's coming together, and I sent you all. It looks good. It looks copy. great. It looks you know, great. Twenty percent done, y'all. We we all need this. Alan's in that, right? Yeah, surprised Alan me that? with that one. I was like, "What is? Well, hold on, wait." And Alan's like, in Marcus. that, right? I was like, <laughs> "Marcus, what's it called?" It's called Innovate Gaming and Esports. You know, uh, Spin and, and Callie from from Tampa. They they kind of grown from doing just cities to doing industries. So this yeah. book is is uh, a survey of the entire industry, the top thought leaders and innovators, and you know all of our, our co-hosts here will be featured in the book. It's it's the book I wish I had when I was a kid, when I was trying to understand the gaming industry and explain it to my parents and my teachers. It, it's amazing. It's coming together. It's really coming together. I'm excited about it. Yeah, if you guys like esports unlocked, uh, my book, and you found value in that, this is that on steroids. Um, I mean, nice. I saw the first prints that you made, and uh, I saw Derek's page and Rich's page, and I mean, he's not kidding around. And obviously, Alan, you know the people who made the book, it sounds like, yeah, they're not yeah. playing around. Like, there's nothing about it that's not, like, top. Like, I saw it. When you sent the preview over, I was like, holy crap. Like, it's... it's Yeah, like, I got scared with the email. I was like, wait Yeah, because they reached out. Yeah, they reached out, and they were like, like we need this yeah, information. Like, we need you. I was like, damn. It's like, a whole production like a team. What are you playing? Yeah, it's not really I didn't know until they said Marcus. And I was like, oh, but that was, like, Three months later, I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah." Right. Think yeah. about think so about definitely. everything Marcus. Think about everything Marcus does. It's like it's uh, true. Everything's so detailed and laid out. It, it, and it doesn't. It's it's not a game. It's it's innovation esports. You guys are gonna be so impressed. I've only seen like tw what twenty five percent, and it's like yeah. it's definitely like both like an almanac and encyclopedia, but also yeah, like, like just taking you through the journey. But it's so like gorgeous it's just gorgeous and it's just like i just need derek's photographer <laughs> ah, yeah you look good on your page d you do look good on your page man for real for real for real uh and rich look good too rich shout out to you he's our producer so he's gonna uh cut these pieces up alan so shout out to rich okay he's got a great page on podcasting great. and stuff in the book and uh i'm excited for it uh and for me we're still doing eat for life the course i teach digital advertising and sales um We've been doing, uh, this week we're going to talk tomorrow, it's free training, uh, do free trainings Monday at 11, and uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about copywriting and the importance of it, and how I didn't know it was important, and then once I learned how important it was, it changed stuff up for me a lot, so I like to, that's the way I like to teach people up front, it's like, yo, these are skills that you don't think are super important, but when you can write something really, really well, so that you don't even have to meet the person, they could read it, sales begin yeah. to increase like dramatically it changed my life to learn copywriting so i'm excited to teach that yeah. tomorrow 11 a.m uh pacific time that's 2 p.m eastern for those of you on the east coast yeah i do that all the time thank <laughs> you for picking that up uh yeah 
So, so uh, Sebastian, you write this. You you write the hooks like they they make people open the emails and yeah, keep reading the emails. Yeah, and like and it's, you know, yeah, it's funny you say that too because like I, I you know I'm a, I'm an artist as well, so uh, I teach people like it's really like writing bars. Like I write a lot of the bars, and it's like it, a copywriting. Yes. Once I was able to correlate the two, it's like really exciting yeah. the mind. You know what I'm saying? It's something I fall in love with it. I you fall know what? in love with it. Sebastian, it's funny you say that. I collect. This is I. I literally collect great copywriting. I. I I've got a whole folder in my. Swipes. In my Copy, you got a swipe Swipes, folder. Yeah. So do oh, I. I will. But like, but but it's, some of it's it's ridiculous. Like it's it's. I'm almost embarrassed that it works on me. Like I'm. I read it. And I can't stop reading. And I'm like, this I, is good, but I'm embarrassed that this is good because this is getting me right where it's hit me here, and I want to buy whatever the hell this person's writing about. He's giving you guys, yeah. I mean, pretty much True. the free. You, you, you pretty much might as well run the training True. tomorrow because that's what I'm going to give examples of. That's what my whole Google Drive folder called copywriting swipes is nothing but great uh, marketing pieces from. Yes. Blo- that's why when you said blog earlier, I know that headline. Like, did I put this out at the wrong time? Yeah. It's going to make someone like me go oh, put what out. You know what yeah, I mean? what are you talking about? So it's brilliant. It's I, want to, brilliant. I want to say one more thing about that. I, I feel like that's the future. I've said this to a few other friends of mine. I feel like that's the future of the internet and life. You know, we uh, the, can you move somebody through uh, through your writing? Can can you can they follow you? It's like how do I? I don't know how to even put the right words on it. But you know, there's been this evolution away from TV. Like nobody watches TV commercials anymore. Right. You know, like can you grab my attention? Can you? Can I? Can you talk to me and keep me enthralled? It's an art, and it people is. that can do that well, I feel like they own the future. You know, they used to say, Marcus, all due respect, they said, you know, coders and programmers were, you know, own the future. I mean this. I feel like people who know how to pull you into their writing and get you to go to a, do a certain thing. I feel like own the future in this new, the new chapter ahead. I really mean that. Listen, you hear it from Alan, so you know it's not a game. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. PST. We're going to talk about it, give examples so you can learn. Copywriting, is it's dangerous, man. It's da- uh, I'll say this. It is. A lot of It can't those... be used for good. You gotta, it's got to be used for sure, good. Sure, sure. You can't be. It's, it, it's that powerful, right? It's that powerful that you have to have that kind of disclaimer. It's that powerful where, like, when you really, really, really get to the pain points, I love that you're always saying that, like, the pain points of somebody's problem I mean, some of the best things to study are like weight loss, right? Like some of those things, like you just look at them and they're just like, you know, but I had this stubborn gut that would not go away. It's like how many people deal with that, right? Like, and that automatically keeps them listening or keeps that yellow bar on the YouTube ad going. Like it just, it's how, it's how you touch people and how you communicate with them. And it's very important. And and it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are because why wouldn't you want to be able to have the skill to be able to sit down and write something that you know unconsciously when you're doing, as you said, we need to learn how to do different things and scale it out, that is sitting in a place that people can read it and engage your product or engage what you're doing. I think it's, like you said, in the future, you're going to have to be able to do it or you're going to have to be able to pay somebody to do it. And if you just check the price on good copy right now, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. So it's a skill yeah. you can come learn tomorrow morning. And, uh, right. I'd love to have everybody there. It anybody, makes, it makes it rain. It, it does. It rain. It, I'm it talking about rain. a lot of those. The, right. the PlayStation, <laughs> Riot, Twitch, those things I was talking about. They, they, what they find is we see on your LinkedIn, you do copywriting. We see these are the things that get the headhunters even disgusting to you. So um, hopefully right. to see you guys there. Um, thank you guys for coming through another great episode. Um, thanks, Alan, for staying the whole time and kicking it with us. We're, we're excited to have you back. Um, and, uh, I got more questions down the line, so please be ready for that. And, uh, all y'all stay safe, uh, and, uh, you know, keep eating for life, baby. This is what we do. This is what we do. We're here for esports, education, entrepreneurship, entertainment every week. And we're back, you know what I'm saying? Like the chiropractor and we'll see you soon. (laughs) Awesome.